Uh, it's been an incredible weekend. Um, it really has. I've said it probably a hundred times so far this weekend, but it's it feels like you're at a family reunion, I and mean, it feels like I'm um, back with all my family and in a place that feels like home. And uh, I'm just loving it. The fans have been great. The McNairs have been great. Uh, the whole organization has been really, really great. And I'm just thankful um, to have my whole family here. You know, my wife and my son are here. My parents are here. My brothers are here. It's my mom's birthday. So it kind of all culminates into a great day today. Given the passage of a little bit of time, some great life changes for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, is there anything maybe that you look back and appreciate in a different light or maybe even appreciate a little bit more given that, that passage of time? I think it's the, the, the people and the memories that you make. Um, that's the thing that, as I come back around, and the staff, I mean, obviously players, um, but workers around the stadium, even s certain fans that I remember. You know, you go out, just out there signing autographs, and you remember fans' faces, and you remember seeing, and you have memories with them. Like, it's just the people and the memories. And it's one of those things that, you're always going to look back and remember even more fondly than you did in the moment. Um, but I think that we had a pretty good appreciation in the moment for it too. But those are the things I'll miss the most hands down about football is, is making memories and the people that you get to do it with. Jamie, I'm sure this will be difficult considering everything you did here, but can you pick a favorite moment as a center? Um, I mean, I, I always go back to the most meaningful one, which we had never been to the playoffs before. We'd never won a playoff game. so. That first playoff game, the pick six, and then the sack on the next series, um, just knowing what that meant to the city and also for myself. I mean, I needed confidence. I needed um, to prove to myself that I was worthy of playing at this level and doing special things at this level. And so um, that moment, because of the impact it had, will always be probably my favorite one. Um, I mean, the, the reason that the NFL is such a difficult one for players in general uh, is because of how gigantic of a business it is. I mean, you're talking four, five, six, seven billion dollar organizations here. And I mean, I'm very, very fortunate, but I don't got that kind of money, man. <laughs> so it's uh, to be able to have a true say and to be able to have a true impact it's extremely difficult because at the end of the day, the truth is it's money talks and you have to have that level of investment. Would I love to? Do I have plenty of ideas and thoughts and things that I think could help um, in a beneficial way from all my experiences? Absolutely. Um, so, but I mean, unless somebody's giving me some equity for free, I ain't doing nothing. I can't, I can't afford it, man. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Obviously, Bob bringing the team here and everything that he means to Houston and um, being the owner when I was drafted and speaking to him throughout situations. And then, I mean, Andre Johnson, no words need to be said. He's a legend. I still get nervous when I talk to Andre. I mean, he's, he's a legend amongst legends, and I'm very fortunate and thankful to call him a friend. And uh, it's to be alongside of him feels right. Go ahead, Sergeant, Sergeant Kim. Yeah, it's been great. Every, every conversation I've ever had with Will leaves me optimistic of that we're in good hands at that position and that uh, knowing that D'Amico's at the helm overall and then you got CJ and you got Will, you have these young guys who understand what it takes to be successful and understand the role that they have to have to create what we want to create here. Um, it's encouraging and both of those guys seem to have great heads on their shoulders, seem to have great work ethic and everybody I've talked to around here seems to love them. So. Those are great signs moving forward, and I'm very, very excited about it. And it all starts up top with D'Amico. I think I sat in his meetings the other day, and um, not that I needed any further proof, but he's the right guy for the job. We'll go Cam and then Randy. Hey, um, JJ, now that you've not quite a whole year been away, you've been away from a little bit. One, how much do you miss it? Yeah. And two, being on the other side, what's that like for you? Yeah. Um, in this new 
Um, you're always going to miss the game and the competition because literally nothing can ever replace that. I mean, my wife and I were talking about it yesterday because obviously she's in a similar situation. There is nothing that can ever replace going out there and competing at the highest level against the best in the world and knowing that you know, you're laying it all on the line and you get the, you get the highs and you get the lows, but that's what makes it so beautiful. So you can never replace that. Um, but I do wake up every Monday morning feeling fantastic. So that's the best part. You know, I'll call my brother and, and I'll be on Monday morning. I'll be like, how are you feeling? I'm like, ah. And I'll be like, oh, I feel great. I'm going to get a coffee. Um, so I don't miss that at all. But the, the friends, the camaraderie, the memories, I mean, even walking out there on the field right now, like knowing that you have the ability to go out there and compete with your brothers and you have the ability to electrify a stadium in a city. It's a really cool feeling, and it, it is a little sad knowing that I'll never get to do that again. Randy, hey, JJ, uh, with everything you gave on the field here in Houston, obviously you did a lot of work off the field, especially during Hurricane Harvey. Mm -hmm. What does all of that mean to you, the difference you made in the lives, really continue to make in the lives of the fans here? Um, I mean, I, I think to me that's just, I think that's a product of, you know, my parents and my upbringing and everybody around me helping me so much. Um, and I feel like that's just what you're supposed to do. I mean, I, I have a job and I have the life that I have because of these fans that come watch us play, that buy our jerseys, that buy tickets. So if I felt like it was my responsibility to give back to the city that made me who I am and gave me the life that I live. So I people want to give me a lot of credit for that. And I think there's a lot of people that do a lot of great things that don't get a lot of credit. And there's a lot of people who help me do the things that I do that don't get a lot of credit. So I'm fortunate and grateful, but I also want, I just feel like that's what you're supposed to do. We'll go to John and then Cole. Hey, JJ, uh, you mentioned conversations with Will Anderson. Did you spend any substantial time with him? And did he seek you out? And what is he most eager to learn from you? Um, he reached out in the, in the very beginning, yes. Yeah. So we, we spoke early on, and we've spoken multiple times since, and we've talked. Um, I told him, I said, whatever questions you got, send them my way. And we were in the weight room the other day talking, and I said, what questions you got? And he froze. So I was like, so uh, he couldn't. It was me, him, and Burke. So I, I was like, Burke, get this guy, get this guy some questions. So he's he's coming up with a list of questions, but he doesn't have. He, he in the moment he froze. So, uh, but he's doing all right by himself. So I don't think I need to give him much insight. He he seems to be on a pretty good path. Yeah, I mean, I think the upside is infinite. Um, it's a matter of, you know, realizing that and supporting that and doing everything necessary to cultivate what he's trying to build here and what he wants to do. But I mean, when you have a guy like D'Amico who is so brilliant uh, from a football X's and O's standpoint, who can also relate to the players from a personality standpoint and an experience standpoint, and who can also motivate in the way that he motivates. I mean, when you put that combination of things together, you've got something special. And then you give him players like CJ, like Will, um, and you combine them with some veteran leadership, and you continue to build that over years. I'm not saying it's imminent, but I'm saying the upside is absolutely infinite. It's just a matter of if they can do it or not. Do a couple more, Elwin and then Chance. JJ, obviously, you accomplished so much here and the town city, fans, everybody appreciates everything you did, but once you got away from the game and retired, is there anything that you go back and think, oh man, I wish I could have done this? There's a billion things. Anybody, anybody that tells you they don't have regrets is a liar. I mean, there's a billion things. I mean, I had a bunch of years with injuries. I wish I didn't have that. I mean, I, there's moments that um, maybe I wish I would cherish more. Like, I, I, was very, I was very focused and driven, and sometimes I wonder if you know, there were moments where I should have just sat there and appreciated a little more, um, not been so focused on the next moment and just appreciate the one you're in and things like that. I mean, our first two years, we did some things that had never been done around here, and I thought everything was sweet, and we were just going to keep it rolling and just do it all. And then you go 2-14, and 14 and it comes back at you quick, and all of a sudden, 12 years later, it's over. So I think appreciating it, um, I think there's there's plenty of things, but... I'm very thankful, and I've, I've said it many times, but if you told 10-year-old me that this is where we'd be standing when you're 34, I would have taken it. All right, we'll wrap it up with Chance and Sarge. JJ, no. how do you put in perspective a kid from Wisconsin moving on draft day, just now to be one of the uh, best players in franchise history, second part, um, but he's only 
two options? Are you the best player? <laughs> you know I'm not going to answer that one. I mean, Dre, Dre's, Dre deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Dre's a legend. He's a GOAT. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very happy to be side by side with Dre. It's, he's incredible. Um, but I mean, putting in perspective, I, I don't know. In that letter that I wrote, I, I think I kind of summed it all up. I didn't know anything about Houston. I had no, I grew up in Wisconsin where the Green Bay Packers are the Green Bay Packers. And that state has a connection to that team and those players. And it's special. And I grew up watching that my entire life and being a part of that. So I didn't know any different. I just assumed this is how you're supposed to, this is what a, a franchise and a, and a fan base are supposed to feel like. You're supposed to have that relationship. So I came down here and tried to create that. And that's, I feel like we've done our version of that down here. And that, I think that's why I feel so much like family is because I, it is. We've been through a lot together. We've been through some ups. We've been through some downs. I mean, we've been through some horrific downs. And we came through it all together and stronger and right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, families don't always look pretty. Families have bad moments. They have great moments. But they always do it together. And here we are doing it together. I love coaching, the actual physical act of coaching. I love passing on knowledge. I love giving information. I love giving feedback. I love trying to help players become the best version of themselves. Um, I hate long hours. I hate uh, having a boss. Like I hate, uh, you know, having to be away from my son that long. I hate all the other things that come with coaching. But the physical act of coaching, I love that but I haven't found a job that'll allow me to do it without all the other bullshit yet. So, um, so no, but I, one of the fun things that I've been doing this year, which is really cool is a, a bunch of defensive guys from across the league will send me their film. Like they'll text me pictures there, text me videos of their film and say, Hey, what do you think about this rush? Or, Hey, what do you think about this? Obviously I get it with my brother, but there's been more and more guys around the league that'll send me practice clips or game clips and ask my opinion. And I think that's really been fun for me to share that knowledge with those guys and to, to pass it on that way because I can do it from my couch. You know, <laughs> I don't have to do it from, from a field. Um, but before I go, I want to say I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate everybody here in Houston. I appreciate all the workers and everybody around here. It's incredible. We've had some unbelievable memories. Um, I also want to let you know that we do have something fun in the works still. Um, I got, I wanted to do it one more time just because it's so fun and it's a good way for us to say thank you one last time. So. Uh, on May 4th, we're going to bring the Charity Classic back to Constellation Field one more time. Um, I'm going to set it up as alumni versus current players. So hopefully, I hope the current players show up. I don't know. But uh, I think we're going to have a little bit of fun on May 4th and raise a little bit of money for charity and get that family feeling back together one more time. So I appreciate you all very much. Thank you very much. Awesome.